Hi fellas, great to have you swing by to check this one out. It is my news parody. My name is Mr. K. Hoo ha! Keep your heads up, fellas, and let's get it on. But first off, please subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and of course that notification bell. Thanks a zillion. And you can take that to the bank, yo. <laughs> Now let's cut through the chase and let's roll it. Alright, hoo-ha! The first story on the show today is give me a break, will ya? <laughs> you heard the bickerings between Dangote and Tinubu over the crude oil fracker. I don't know if you heard Dangote when he said if he knew what he was going into, he wouldn't have actually built that particular refinery. Now, Nigeria has massive oil refineries that are working, but the oil thieves have countless locally made crude oil refineries that are being discovered and burnt down by the authorities. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Stealing crude oil is a massive criminal activity, and when you're caught, they'll be held to pay for it. That's how that is, usually. Uh, depending on if you have the right connections in Abuja, a call can come through from Abuja and then as the suspect they let you go, they set you free. <laughs> it's the thing. Why don't we insist on these guys to set up refineries for every oil producing state in the Niger Delta? <laughs> Why don't you just seize it, improve on it, using local technology and make it work. <laughs> that sounds crazy, Jackson, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness, shut up, all right? Back up, this end for you. You don't need to be here, okay? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, oh, here we go. Back to the matter. Now, those crazy bald-headed professors of petroleum engineering to please come forward and do something useful apart from being horny when they see our cute little girls in their classrooms they can at least make themselves relevant for once I mean <laughs> <laughs> oh man I don't know what's with those guys now the purchase of fuel in Nigeria today has become a state of emergency microeconomy is in a shutdown mode because of the price of fuel, data for medium scale enterprises, as well as the big business concerns, many have fled to other West African countries. The scarcity has led to increased prices, with a liter of petrol selling for 800 to 1000 naira in some filling stations and black market racketeers taking advantage of the situation. I mean, why President Bola Tinubu has fallen head over heels in love with France. That's where he goes to recharge his battery. They say he runs on a certain device now, which is his Aruba friend, Mr. Fiasco Boari, also ran on for eight years and still running on it. Shame, shame, shame for those who thought they're smarter than everyone else in Nigeria. Now, these were guys who actually said they would not encourage medical tourism during the campaigns in 2015. Isn't it? Utterly shameful that these guys have been surviving with medical tourism. Another shame, 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 shame for them. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jackson, why are you laughing? I was sitting with talking to you, man. Give me a break, will ya? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> now, let's like, switch gears now. Uh, the issue of hate propelled racism in the UK. Anonymous black people are feeling a massive sense of fear in the UK presently. Hoping and praying an all out full scale xenophobia doesn't occur, sad mate, in it. This lady here is dumbfounded and rightly so. Racist riots that erupted across the United Kingdom in the first half of August were ostensibly aimed at Muslims, immigrants, and the police. <laughs> But for many black Britons, it also reignited memories of racist violence by the far right during the second half of the 20th century. Are we in 2024 or 1974? That's Ngozi Fulani, 
the CEO and founder of Sister Space, an African and Caribbean heritage charity in East London. The organisation boarded up its windows as supporters warned them that far-right rioters were headed that way. The riots were fuelled by misinformation spread online that the suspect in a deadly knife attack was an Islamist migrant. We're going to keep praying, in it? Yeah, Jackson. I'm going to let you be this time because you made some sense, innit? <laughs> now, when the DNC, that's uh, talking about the Democrats National Convention, was held in the United States of A, some folks thought Kamala Harris was fantastic in delivering her speech on the night and that she sounded wonderful. I'm like, hell no, that's not exactly what we want, innit? I said, I got to go see it. And then I saw it. What I saw was that she was ghastly with the script. It was underwhelming. <laughs> By thanking my most incredible husband, Doug, for being an incredible partner to me, an incredible father to Cole and Ella, and happy anniversary, Dougie. Oh my goodness. Now that's our show for today. Many thanks for swinging by to check this out, yo. Please don't fail to like and share this video. And give me the thumbs up, sugar. We kind of like that, guys, don't we? And if you haven't subscribed to Mr. K24 Radio, please click on the subscribe button and, of course, the notification bell. Hola! You're now fully subscribed to Mr. K24 Radio. Many thanks to the subscribers. Uh, so spread the news around, spread the word around about Mr. K24 Radio. My name is Mr. K and I'm going to see you uh, in the next one. Bye.